I recently did an interview with Mark Leda on the channel Soft White Underbelly. All right, Chris. Chris, so where are you from originally? Where'd you grow up? I was born in Los Angeles, California, Inglewood. Uh, but whenever I talk about it, I say that I grew up in Denver, Colorado. This interview took place in New York City, and I had been a, a really a fan of his channel for many years. I reached out to his team some time ago and suggested that they air a story similar to mine because it provided, in my mind, a level of hope that we hadn't seen a lot of on his channel. And for anybody who follows his channel, the content is absolutely raw, it's real, it addresses real problems in our country and how we treat people around us who suffer from things like sex trafficking, you know, prostitution, addiction, and various other, you know, amount of problems that he addresses on his channel. I wanted to give some clarity or some context really as to why I did it. I've received quite a lot of messages that are very, very inspiring, a lot of support, a lot of really great feedback, but I've also received quite a few messages that talk about the exploitive nature of Mark's channel and that it's not a great idea or that it's not a good project. And as somebody who went through the process with Mark and somebody who values putting a message out there that supports and helps people, I felt it really important to address some of these comments and give an extra layer of perspective as an interviewee as to why I did it. First and foremost, the exploitation parts of these comments or some of the feedback that I've seen over the years on his channel, in my mind, are very blindsided. They're, they're, they're not looking, for those who feel that way, they're not looking at the big picture of what's happening. They're not looking at the message, rather, they're looking at the interviewer and thinking that there's some level of gain financially or whatever it is because of these videos that are being posted. As somebody who knows Mark and lots of people who create these channels and talk about problems or common problems in the United States, I can safely say that there is virtually no gain personally to the people who produce this high quality media that's addressing really, really horrible problems in our country. Now, I can't speak for Mark specifically or anybody because I'm not them, but my guess is that there is virtually no financial compensation for these videos. And if anything, and I know this for Mark and probably many more, they come out of pocket more every year to help support some of these people, to give them a voice and help them. That to me is entirely the opposite of exploitation. It's bringing awareness, it's providing support, it's providing an outlet for those people to share their stories. And when we sit down and we think about, you know, where has that person been in the past? Have they been able to share their story? The answer is probably going to be no for the most part. Many of these people who you see on these on these channels, Marks and, and some of the other channels are people who haven't had a voice their entire life. And them sharing their stories is not only giving them what I would consider a therapeutical outlet to talk about what they've been through, but it's also providing people with hope who may be struggling 
in those same situations. And they know now that there's somebody else out there who's having the same struggle. In addition to that, it's bringing awareness to people who haven't had as difficult of a life as to what some of these people go through. Everybody, in my opinion, has a story. Some of us are much luckier than others and don't have to go through the horrific traumas and abuse and some of the other things that are discussed on these channels. And we don't understand what it's like to be that person. Many people just immediately assume that, hey, this person's an addict or this person's a prostitute or whatever it is, they're no good to society. One thing that is commonly confused or misunderstood, I would, I would think is a better way of putting this, is that going through trauma as a child in your early life really shapes the way you think. And it really transforms how your brain works. And this is something that is very often overlooked with stories, touching stories or stories of trauma, because people simply don't understand it. There isn't a basic psychology class that you can take going through school or high school, unless you are you know, a psychologist or you go into college to better understand this, that helps people understand that there is a brain injury, essentially, that's happening to many of these people. And they don't process life the same way you do. They don't process their decision making the same way that you do. So what you may consider, oh, this is really easy, they can just stop, is not really easy and they can't just stop. I consider myself an example of somebody who is a, a very rare percentile of people who were able to make it through a really traumatic childhood and come out of the other side of it successful and intelligent and the ability to process my emotions. Now, I received a lot of feedback on that, uh, some of which implied that I was egotistical or maybe I was dishonest with some of this. I want to point out that in my situation, I was very, very lucky. At a young age, I was adopted. I'm sorry, I wasn't adopted at the young age. At, the young, at a young age, I found my guardians through a tutoring program at the Denver Public Schools. Had it not been for me finding my now mother, I firmly believe that I would either be in prison, I would be dead, I would be addicted to drugs. Who knows what would have happened. The support that I received from my adopted parents absolutely shaped and changed my life forever. It was not easy for many years, probably up until my mid-20s, to process what I had gone through as a kid and really understand what it had done to me mentally and emotionally. Not everybody gets that opportunity. Lots of people will go their entire life with no support, with nobody to stand by their side like I had. Lots of people will live their life thinking that what they're doing is normal, that what the drugs are doing or helping them to make them feel better, to process things happier, to make them feel better because of the, the chemical changes that are happening in their mind. Many people will suffer their entire life because they don't know what it's like to have a loving and supporting family like I did. I don't look at my life or myself for that matter and say, wow, I was just really, really 
resilient, stronger than everybody else. I look at my life and I'm grateful that I was able to find the support that I needed to live a better life, to have the structure that I never had as a kid growing up into my teen years. It's really, really difficult for me to sit back and think that there's somebody out there today who has a similar childhood to me and they'll never have the ability to understand their value or what they're worth. That's really hard because it took me a long time with lots of resources. My adopted parents did so much to get me to understand myself, to put me through therapy, to give me a good life, to show me what structure was, to show me that it's okay to be loved. Most people will never have that, that are living that life today. So I encourage people to think about what they're saying or what they're thinking really when they see a story like this. Having an outlet like soft right underbelly is a tremendous step in the right direction for bringing awareness to how people live, how they think, and some of the decisions they make so we as a collective society can better understand how we can support those people. If you don't already, I highly suggest or recommend that you watch some of the videos on his channel. I highly recommend that you internalize what he's doing and how it's helping people probably across the world. And lastly, at the end of the day, when you go to bed at night, I really want you to think about all the great things that you've had in your life and be grateful. Don't judge people. Don't turn a blind eye to people who are struggling. Look at your friends around you and see who might be struggling. Be that support that that person never had. Make a difference in somebody's life today.